live from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the Cube covering KubeCon and Cloud Native Con Europe 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back, everyone. This is the Cube's exclusive coverage here in Copenhagen, Denmark, for KubeCon 2018, part of the CNCF. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of the Cube, here with Lauren Cooney, co-host this week, founder of Spark Labs. Our next guest is Cheryl Hong, product and engineering manager, at Storage OS. She does a lot of DevOps. She runs the Cloud Native, or founder of the Cloud Native Meetup in London. Exactly. It's great to have you on. Thank you. It's great to be on. So, I mean, you've drank the Kool Aid on Cloud Native, so we're loving the trend. The trend is your friend here. So, Cloud Native is super so hot, and you're doing Storage OS is the name of the company, which is a DevOps oriented. Mm -hmm. so you're obviously using Kubernetes. First question: How excited are you with the Cloud Native trend right now? Because mm -hmm. people are getting it with Kubernetes. What's your, mm. what's your reaction to the, to the momentum? So before I joined my current company, I was an engineer at Google um, for about five years. And I'm probably the cl a cloud native in the truest sense of the word in that I joined cl Google when I was 21. I don't remember a time before <laughs> what we think of as containers and orchestrators and, and I used Borg, which was the internal predecessor to Kubernetes. So when I came out, and I started looking into Docker and Kubernetes, I thought, this is obvious, this is just how software is built and run, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and what did it was you quite find interesting to realize, no, the what, industry what, what is What was not it there. like for you to go out and say, wait a minute, you do all that? What was it like? Um, I, as I said, I, I'd completely forgotten <laughs> that this is how software was done, was done before, so when I came out, I was like, this totally makes sense to me. This is very, very natural to me that you run software packaged in a container and then you orchestrate it across data centers and across machines with something like Kubernetes now. But seeing the whole industry move to this mindset has been really impressive, um, particularly for the CNCF. They've put a lot of effort into, into spreading this paradigm and they've, done, the they've done a good job. Before we dig yep. into some DevOps questions I have for you, because this is such an exciting topic, take a minute to explain Storage OS, what mm -hmm. the company does, and your role there. Um, Storage OS has been around for a couple of years, two, three years now, and one of the biggest problems with containers is they're designed to be stateless. They're designed so that you don't have to worry about running containers in different environments or moving them around, they should always run the same. So, but clearly there is a need for storage. If you're doing something interesting with your application, you have to make a decision about where to actually store the data at the end of the day. So Storage OS, we do persistent storage for containers. Um, it's an abstraction layer for storage that runs on top of any infrastructure, could be on-prem, could be one of the cloud providers, could be virtual machines. And we provide storage to pods and to the applications and to the containers that are, that are running and we also manage replication and high availability in there, among other things. Um, my role there is officially product manager. I do a ton of different things because we're a 15 person startup. <laughs> so I actually manage DevOps engineers. I do public speaking. I write and speak about storage and containers and cloud. Um, I write all the technical documentation for the, for the product. And very excitingly, as of yesterday, in fact, we announced our GA product. So now I can finally say we have a real genuine product that's out there and we think it's ready to, to go out publicly in that's life. That's great. Great to be very, a Very, very exciting, yeah. So, so you're not busy at all, is what you basically <laughs> are saying. <laughs> I do a million things, but I have a great time. That's, that's awesome. So yeah. what is, you know, with your 1.0 release and the product is actually out the door, what mm -hmm. kind of, you know, what, are, what kind of applications are you supporting, for example? Um, what do you yeah. see as like the kind of use cases of folks that are coming in and using mm -hmm. your solution? The biggest one that is, is not yet solved a solved problem is the database use case. So transactional databases like MySQL and Postgres and, and so on. The other use case that I see a lot is with CI CD pipelines. So people are running Jenkins to build their software and they need to store the artifacts of the software somewhere. And it's quite difficult to do that at the moment. So those I think are our two, two priorities. That's great. And DevOps world right now, one of the things that's super exciting is the whole infrastructure as code thing is happening. You mentioned that this is people are getting it. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge of staffing up is hard. 
you guys are a startup, you're doing a lot of, wearing different, a lot of different hats as startups do, but as companies start to grow and do more cloud native, true cloud native, you got to hire people and people got to learn. What, what are you finding is a good mechanism for learning? Obviously you do a meetup, that's a great face-to-face -face group opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that people can do to get involved? How are you guys recruiting? How do you manage the team? Uh, is it small teams? Is it, I mean, what's, the, what's the, the workflow look like? If you can share some insight into that, that'd be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I'm the hiring manager for, for DevOps engineers and when I started looking for this, I thought what would be great is if I could find someone who has some experience with running Kubernetes in production. Clearly that's <laughs> very difficult because <laughs> Kubernetes has only been around for you know really a year or two and widely adopted. Um, meetups are a brilliant way for people to get into this space, find out what the community is talking about. Um, and then also to learn and to teach others. And I really encourage people to go and do public speaking themselves and become known in the, in the community for it. Um, aside from that, I think DevOps is a very broadly defined term, <laughs> which is one of the difficulties with finding people. DevOps encompasses everything from people who are traditionally you know, Linux sysadmins to people who really do understand the container mindset and the orchestrator mindset. Um, so I think, for me, my best my best channel to find the right people has always been either face to face people I know, or else looking for things like Kubernetes or other orchestrators. So I got to ask you how the Kubernetes. We've been giving some good um, um, hat tips and props to the CNCF for doing a good job with Kubernetes. Um, what is it about Kubernetes and the CNCF that's working in your mind? Why is it working so well? Obviously it's successful, it's got kind of a de facto standard because a lot of people love it. What are they doing right and what is the work areas that you see are opportunities for people to innovate? So the CNCF has, has a couple of different branches. Um, one thing that I think they did really well at the beginning was they decided that the technical direction and the vision of the projects would be set amongst the community rather than being controlled by one of Google or you know Microsoft or Red Hat or one of the big big names in this. Um, so separating the governing board from the technical oversight committee is something I think they do they did really right at the beginning, and also encouraging the the meetups and the face to face and the community community growth. So in terms of innovation in this sphere, there's a lot of unsolved problems. There's uh, you know we have a absolute mass of tools out there, and we don't have best practices and a lot of experience in how it's done. Um, I work for Storage OS because storage is one of those unsolved problems yeah. for, for containers. Security is another one. Serverless is really cu coming, you know. And there's a lot of opportunity now to get involved in those conversations and steer towards where you want your own community and your own people that to is That to is be. great, and uh, you're doing, I've been in open source for quite a while and the strategy is spot on. So mm. what do you see in terms of, inside of the CNCF, projects that you're excited about or things that you want to get engaged with further or just, mm. you know, in general, what's, what's really cool? Um, on a personal technical level, I think serverless is very, very exciting. Um, I still think of myself as an engineer in many ways, so I think the developer experience of that is great. One thing that I've seen new at, the, at KubeCon is there's a lot of focus now on getting the, the new first-time contributors, the mentors, expanding the community, you know, looking beyond just can you submit code to how do we onboard and bring in more people so we have a more diverse set of opinions and training, that setting can come people in. up, open, yeah. open arms. Yeah, th these things don't happen by themselves, you know, they do take effort and I'm really glad that open source has really, really thrown itself full, full heartedly into those kind of efforts. Shell, great to have you on theCUBE, appreciate your, your commentary. Uh, my final question for you is for the folks watching who couldn't come today, this week, what's going on here? Share the vibe, share the, Story, what's this top story? What's the most important thing happening this mm -hmm. week that people should know about? If I see one, one trend in people that I talk to, it's Kubernetes is getting boring. <laughs> you know, what's the next big thing? Um, service meshes seem to be a hot topic. A lot of people are, are talking about them. But it's quite, it's, it's, I think it's great actually that Kubernetes is now becoming boring. People are standardizing on one thing, so we're not duplicating a bunch of effort. 
Um, and there's a lot of buzz in the hallway about, okay, we're, we're fully bought into bought into Kubernetes now. We know it's a success. The CNCF has graduated Kubernetes. So now what are the difficult problems? Now it's about communicating between, on the networking side, between federating between clusters across different regions. Um, those are all things that they're not yet solved problems and that makes them quite an interesting so challenge. So you need boring to get to the exciting stuff because boring in this case is good. Boring, You're boring rallying is around good, something yeah. solid to go attack other opportunities. I think it's just a yeah. trend of, you know, yeah. we have innovation at the very cutting edge beginning. People yeah. rally around them, they become standards, then they become commodities, and people no longer find those exciting. But that allows us to work on yeah. even more exciting new things. Cheryl, great stuff. Congratulations on, uh, on your, your meetup and your success. Thank and you. And your startup shipping the, the products. It's the Cube bringing you all the action here in Copenhagen. I'm John Furrier. Lauren Cooney here, Cube coverage continues. Stay with us for more after this short break.